In this video, we're going to be showing you how to take a reader that only reads one MagStrike track and how to modify it so it can read other tracks that it was specified for. Now, to understand how this works, you need to know a little bit more about the layout of MagStrike. Now, this is just a standard hotel card that I got from the hacker conference sometime. Now, it just has three tracks. This is a standard MagStrike, three tracks. Now, this is a copy card, and it only has one track. It uses track two. You can very cleanly see the gap where track one is and where track three would be, right there. I'll go ahead, I'll show you a single ride metro card. This one uses track one and track two. Again, you can see very plainly where track one is and where track two is. Now, this is the key here. If I had something that could read track two, if I had some way to shift this down so that track one lined up with track two, just like that. I could read this track. I need to find a way to create essentially width here so I can align the mag head to read this. Now, this is what a mag head looks like. It's a rather simple device. All it does is sense magnetic fluxes. The key with this thing is to realize there's nothing special about it. All it does is sense magnetic fluxes, sends it down these wires, and which goes to the F2F decoder. The F2F decoder also isn't special. It doesn't care whether you have track one, track two, track three. It doesn't know anything about that. That is all character set and the number of bits. All that does is sense these magnetic fluxes and convert it into a clock bit and a data bit. So that's the key. All of this hardware here is perfectly capable of reading track one, track two, track three, even tracks that haven't even been invented yet. So we're going to take a look at the V3A uh, by Omron. This is a Model 4. V3A is the family of Magstripe, Omron is the maker, and uh, number 4 is the model number. Now this only reads track 2 of Magstripe. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop this open here, let you see what's inside. Now, this is the side that has the reader head. Again, there's nothing special about this. Um, it's aligned. These little wires actually go over here to this other side. This other side is where this right here is the SUF decoder. Here you can see where I kind of put some uh, put some glue in so that my uh, wires wouldn't pull out. So this isn't special. This isn't special. The key is how do we get this thing aligned so it can read other stripes? Now the interesting thing to note, and what someone on the Stripe Snoop developer mailing list pointed out, is that the V3A family has these little screw holes right here. If you guys can see that. Now, these screw holes right here, they, they're there because Omron just built the same plastic casing for regardless of what reader it is. And all it does is just align it differently. Or if you have a read head that, has, that can read two tracks at once, all that means is there's, this is a, a, a wire for ground and these are two for the uh, magnetic sensing. Um, it just has another set of those. And it just has another little set that can read, read bit streams. Um, so all Omron would do is if it wanted, uh, you know, a track one only reader would take this and move it forward one. Because you have to remember, three track reader goes in, so the farthest down, that would be for reading track one, that would be for reading track two, that would be for reading track three. So there's track one, or excuse me, there's track two. But if I could move this, I could uh, read the other tracks. Now. It would be a major pain to every time you wanted to read a different track to have to pop the sides off this sucker, unscrew this, screw it to the new location, and swipe it. That would really suck. So instead of trying to move the mag head, let's try to move the card. If there was a way we could prevent this card from going in any far farther, instead of reading track one, this thing would be aligned to read track two. In fact, the smart thing to do would be to move this to the track three position. That way, when we swipe it, we're reading track three. We put some type of blocking mechanism in there, which lets us read track two, and yet another blocking mechanism, which pushes this thing out even more, so we read track one. So, very simple. This is just a, uh, it's called a number zero 
um, Phillips head screwdriver. You normally buy these in little sets. Cost about seven bucks at Home Depot or something. Or any type of uh, eyeglass repair screwdriver might have this. These are just little Phillips screws. So I go ahead and unscrew it, and I'm going to slide it forward. Actually, excuse me, I'm going to slide it backwards. That's the key. It's easy to get mixed around. You have to remember this is backwards. Track one, track two, track three. So going in will be track one, track two, track three. So you want your reader to be moved out. So it's reading track three. So let's take this little screw here. Screw it down. Take this one over here. Take it, move it over. All right. This thing is now aligned to read track three. Now, how do we read the other tracks? We don't want to have to unscrew this. Well, what we've got are these little shims of PVC right here. Now, we take one of these shims. Let me go ahead and stick this back on so we've got you know, less junk kind of flying around. Now, what we do is we take one of these little one of these little shims and slip it right in there. So now the card can't go in as far. We're no longer aligned to read track three. We're now aligned to read track two, and it just swipes right through, nice and easy, just like that. But let's say that's not what we want. We want to read track one. Well, we've got one that's even thicker. Same thing. Slide that sucker in. And now look, we really aren't even going in very far. Now this head is aligned to read track one. Just swipe it. So, again, just stick it in there. You're aligned to read track one. 